But look in Psalms chapter number one, verse number one. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. When I was reading through this, and I've had this thought for a long time, it seems like that we live... <laughs> All right, I've got to turn this on. Hold on a minute. They're giving me this, that, and the other. And, uh, good? All right, thumbs up. All right. We're living in a day where people are wanting more. They, the, even the lost world is looking for, uh, they don't call it blessings. You know, they call it things. But in the church... We're looking, and I, I thought about uh, Jacob, how that Jacob always was searching for a blessing. He was actually, I, I, uh, he kind of ripped his brother off for his birthright, trying to get his, uh, uh, his birthright. And you know, you say, well, uh, Esau, he was to blame. But I just can't imagine my brother coming to me and me saying, I ain't going to give you a bowl of soup. I just couldn't imagine him doing that. But then he stole his birthright. He, sold, he stole his blessing. But then he finally ran into Laban who just kind of just was more uh, strategic in how he could con people than, uh, than Jacob. And Jacob was always, he was wrestling with God, trying to get more and trying to get more. And with that thought in mind, I want to preach on a blessed man. What is a blessed man? Now, see, in the world's eyes, they say you're blessed if you have good health, and that, that is good. It is good to have good health. If you have a lot of finances, that would be good to have a lot of finances, but that's not at all what God's trying to get across here. That is not what God's concerned about. When Jesus came, he said, The Son of Man cometh uh, to seek and to save. He's interested in your, uh, what, your future, what's going to happen to you after the grave. But we're interested in up to the grave because we don't think that there's nothing after the grave. So the word blessed here, it means to make happy or to make successful. Or it also means to set apart or consecrate to a holy purpose and with that thought in mind I want to talk about being a blessed man or a woman you know a lot of times I found out studying the life of Jacob that he was already blessed right. his birthright that was going to be his anyway he didn't steal nothing that he didn't have coming you know what you're blessed and you may not be aware of how blessed you really are you know, you say, well, I'm not a billionaire. Okay, that's good. But are you saved? Are you saved? If you're saved, you know what that is? Money can't buy what you possess. It took the blood of Calvary to get the blessing that you had. Do you know what? Donald Trump don't have what you have. Bill Gates don't have what you have. You know why? Because their involvement is with funds and finances and yours is in faith. Something that will be last now first thing we see about a blessed person he's blessed in his position you say his position he tells us the psalmist does right here about his position he said he's blessed is the man that walketh not in the council you know what one of his positions is in his walk I don't walk in the council of the ungodly I don't get my advice from, from the horoscope in the newspaper. 
I don't get my advice from Wall Street. Uh, my goal is not uh, a 401k. That is, not, that is where, not where I get my advice. I don't get my advice, Brother Ray, from the Pope. You know where I get my advice from? The godly, from the Word of God, from the man of God who's living right. Where is your position? How do you walk today? The Bible says in Ephesians, it says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. It's just like what Brother Moore has said. You know, once you get saved, things change in your life. Hey Amen. Going to the bar ain't in the plan no more. Chasing around the chasing the girls around. That ain't in the plan no more. Why? Because things change. Why? Your position. You don't walk like the ungodly. His second position is how he stands. He said, Nor standeth in the way of sinners. See, the Bible says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He said, Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You know what? You know why people are wavering to and fro? It's because they're not in this book. Some of them not even saved. You say, we, we're living in a church age where you can just come and they won't give you coffee and donuts and all kinds of stuff like that. You don't need coffee and donuts. You need Jesus, amen. What you need is a good dose of salvation that'll change your life and give you a new purpose in life. I want to tell you my position is I'm going to stand up for God. You know, this crowd is swell. Uh, you know, uh, I ain't going to say nothing about them uh, people committing abortion. You ought to. You ought to hate that. You ought to stand against people that get, uh, have abortions. You ought to tell them that's wrong. It's wrong to have an abortion at any stage in life. Hey, you know what? Gay marriages, they ain't no such a thing in the Word of God. That's not right. You need to stand against that. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to stand up and to withstand. Because Why do you need to withstand? Because you, they're going to attack you. When you start standing up, you'll have to be able to withstand what comes against you. And you can't stand if you don't have the power to withstand what comes against you from the world, even your family. Huh? I remember preaching my dad's funeral, and I preached on you got to be born again. And I had some cousins there. And one of them particularly, I love him. But if he could have, boy, he would have choked me down. Why? Because he didn't like the news that I had to bring. Why? Because there's nobody, even the man that was in the casket that was my father, he didn't make it to heaven. Why? Because he didn't ask Jesus to save him. And I want to tell you, my friend, that won't make your family happy when you stand up against that kind of stuff. But you have to be born again. That's just simple, plain cut truth. You've got to be able to stand. Amen. But look at the last part of his position. He said he don't sit in the seat of the scornful. He's blessed in every way you can be. Sitting, standing, walking. Hmm? He said, you know what he does? He said, I don't, I don't sit around people that mock. That's what that word scoff means. It means to, or scornful, it means to scoff or to mock. He said, I don't sit around with people that make fun of the holy ways and God's ways. I'm not having no part of that. Uh, I, 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 I worked in a factory for almost 20 years, then drove a truck for uh, 23 years. And you want to learn how to cuss, you just go join either one of those crews. You'll learn how to cuss real quick. Uh, I could deal with all of it, but I didn't like it when they used my Lord's name in vain. I don't like none of it. Don't take me wrong. I don't practice none of it. But I want to tell you what we need to do is we don't sit around and hang around with people. You know, uh, I know sometimes you're in positions where you have to hear it, but you don't have to approve of it. Hmm? A lot of people accept that and think it's all right. It's never all right to do that. Uh, Amen. The scornful. You know, they, uh, they get their advice from uh, uh, the uh, country music singers who's hanging out in the bar smoking pot behind the, the stage. That's who you're going to get. you Somebody who ain't got enough brain cells in their head left uh, to know how to find their way to the car? Sure. You're going to let them be, uh, tell you how to live your life? We don't, we don't, our position is against all that. Right. You know, it was, it, it's been wrong since day one to drink liquor. And you know what? In 2024, today on the 18th, February, you know what it is? It's still wrong to drink liquor. Right. It's still wrong to cheat on your spouse. Right. Uh, it's still wrong to be abusive to your children. Right. 
Don't ever think that that's all right because the world says it's all right. Our position, we stand against all that. Uh, let me say this about children. They need a good spanking every now and then. If you don't believe me, you ought to check some of the ones that you're dealing with. Huh? I say spanking. I didn't say abuse. Huh? Our world's out of control because nobody gets disciplined over nothing. Huh? They don't discipline the kids at home. They go to school. We was talking before. Brother Randy and Brother Ed and I was talking about, about teachers. My brother has, this was a, a girl in his church, her first year of teaching first graders. And she told my, pa my brother, who's her pastor, says, Pastor, I don't know if I can finish the year out. These kids are so mean. He said that, she said, they cuss me, they kick me, they spit on me, they bite me. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't float in a school like that much. I, wouldn't I couldn't do it. Uh, they spit on me. I, I say, here you go, brother. Yeah, we I just can't do it. And, we, and you say, well, we, 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 we can't be mean to them. Well, that's why we're in the situation we're in. Uh, because of their position, we need to stand. You know what God is for discipline? He's for discipline in your life. Hmm? People lay in bed all day. People lay in bed all day. Huh? So I ain't got nothing to do. Go tear something up so you can fix it. Huh? No discipline. Huh? They don't read their Bible. They sit around. Our kids has got the strongest wrist and thumbs. They'll never get carpal tunnel. They playing games all day. Hey Amen. Y'all quiet, but it's just still the truth. They ain't going to change the facts just because, you know, you know, just because they tore down the, uh, the statues down south, that don't mean that we didn't have a civil war. It still happened. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's uh, still the truth. Look at this in verse 2. We see, we see a blessed man's purpose. We see a blessed man in his position, but we see his purpose. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. You know what his purpose is? That word delight, means to affect with great pleasure that, that, you know what, what, what the person who's blessed is this book right here means a lot to him hmm? brother, that's the most important book that's just in your house brother Peter there ain't no book you can't bring nothing in your I don't care what you do I don't care oh, uh, brother, uh, brother Ray you can get every carpentry book there is on how to build everything there is to be built and it won't mount to nothing compared to that book right there that is the most important book that you'll ever have I, I, I've got a whole office full of books Books about books of the Bible, books about this, books about people of the Bible, all kinds of that. Ain't none of them. And I have found one thing about these, these authors. When I find something I can't understand, they don't write nothing about it. So they don't understand it either. So I can't understand because they don't understand. So I'm trying to tell you that this book right here, do you know something about the laws of God? They satisfy a person that's saved. I don't, you know, I'm saved with the fact that I'm saved by grace. I don't need, I don't need all that other stuff. These people that's kind of come with uh, three Hail Marys and uh, eat a wafer and, and get baptized, I, I ain't for that. Why? It's easier to be saved by grace. Huh? You know the thing about being saved? It's a birth. It's a birth. That's why you can't get lost again. Because it's a birth. Do you know what, uh, Brother Josh? you got two girls. Them girls will be yours when you're dead and gone. There's nothing will ever change that. That's the way it is when you get saved. You know why? That's a, that law satisfies me. I don't have to work because if we did, how much work would I have to do to get a mansion in heaven? Sure. I mean, they're selling houses down here that I wouldn't uh, pay $70,000 for, and they're, they're selling them for $200,000, $300,000. And they're, they ain't even got a gravel driveway. Do you know what's going to run in front of your house? In heaven, it's going to be a street of gold. How much would you have to do to earn a place like that? You ought to be satisfied with the grace of God that gives you eternal life. Amen. You ought to be satisfied in the law of His long suffering. He puts up with you. Huh? <laughs> I don't think I've ever made my wife more mad than since I've had this ear problem because she talks to me and I don't hear 
honestly I don't hear <laughs> and I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse it's a blessing until she gets mad and you know <laughs> and she's, she said I told you uh, can't hear you uh, can't hear you you know I don't know if I get this fixed or not <laughs> this might be this might be good for another 20 years <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is that why uh, uh, why would you want something and you know here's the thing this has been attacked more it was a, you know ain't it funny brother Bob how that right off the right off the gate God he put in there what he knew was going to be attacked right off creation in the beginning God created and they've, they've attacked all that you know trying to tell we come from monkeys and all kinds of stuff like that and you know hard to believe all that you know you know what they won't want to do they're not satisfied with this Amen. you know I don't even like preachers that say well you know the Dead Sea Scrolls I don't care about them I ain't never seen them and don't care if I ever see them why because I got this book right here this Bible, this King James Bible, I can't even understand that. Why would I want to add something to my collection that I can't even understand it either? Huh? This book right here satisfies me. I'm satisfied. I, even the part, like Brother Moore was talking about the mind of Christ, saying you can't understand it, this and that. You know, I can't understand all he does. Brother, uh, Brother Josh preached on the love of God, and the Bible says it passes understanding. You can't even understand how much God loves you. It's beyond your... And I never felt good about preaching on the love of God because I always went away depressed because I couldn't ever do it. But then I thought, well, they can't understand it either. But you know what that satisfies me? That's why I'm blessed because I'm satisfied knowing that God, no matter how bad I do, you know, some days I get up, I do pretty good. Some days I get up and I don't do good at all. Some days I struggle. In all areas of my life, you say, well, I wouldn't believe that. Well, I'm telling you. And if you would tell on yourself, you would say you struggle too. Uh, especially if you work out there in the public. Mm, dealing with these nice people <laughs> that don't know God. They're so wondrous and glorious. Uh, see he's blessed because he's satisfied but then look he said he meditates he studies it you, you know why you're probably not satisfied with this you don't read it enough you don't look at it enough you don't get yourself involved in what all it says try to figure out what, what, what's, what the word of God is really all about what it's saying who he's talking to uh, you know uh <laughs> I was I watched this guy. He's got a YouTube a YouTube channel, and what he does is he goes around America, and he does a study on the cultures, and he had one on Appalachia. So I'm from Eastern Kentucky, so I got to watch it. I got to, and so he's in Harlan County, Kentucky, down in the hills. That's where Ray and I are from, down in the hill. Huh? See, I gotta have you on my side. You know, so this guy's he's he's talking to this fellow about coal and the industry of the coal and all of that, and this fellow starts talking about. He said, "Well, I always pack a Bible." He'd already used a bunch of cuss words, and that kind of leaves me behind right there. And he he said, "Yeah." He talked about that the Bible how it has healing in it, and I'm thinking, I need I, I got to understand here. So he tells this guy that he can take the Bible and lay it next to someone who's bleeding and he'll stop the bleeding. And uh, the guy said, well, where's that at? And he said, Ephesians chapter 15. Now, I'm not a Bible scholar, but uh, I don't believe there's 15 chapters in the book of Ephesians. I don't think he knows much about the Bible. What do you think, Brother Moore? You think he knows much? <laughs> I'm pretty pretty sure the last time I read it, it was six chapters. So he only missed it by nine. Mm. You know, uh, if you're going to say something about this book, won't you read it? Yeah. If you're going to stand up, won't you read it? Yeah. Won't you? You know, this book right here contains life and death in it. 
It tells you, it tells you how to live your life. It tells you how to raise your children. Sure. Mm-hmm. Tells you, you know, how to be faithful to God. Your stewardship as a child of God. It tells you that. Right. Huh? You know, this same guy was talking. He said, now in this area, he's talking about the church now. They don't push what they believe. There's something wrong with that. A church that don't push what they believe, something wrong with that. Because we're supposed to push what we believe. That's old time salvation. They don't want to hurt. That's why a guy can walk, run around with tattoos all over him and his shirt off and smoke a cigarette and his head shaved on this side and a ponytail on the back. And I ain't against none of that. If, you, if that's what you got to do, uh, help yourself. I ain't doing it. I shaved my head in the middle. So we're, we're good to go there. But what I'm saying is, you know, I can't take a guy's opinion that don't know nothing about it. There's nothing worse than trying to talk to somebody who don't know nothing about the Bible. Mm, study it. Look, you know, that word meditate, it means to think on. It means to revolve in the mind. You know, that brings me to this point. You need to be stirred up about this. That's why I say, I wouldn't give you a dime for a person who professes to be saved and he's not against abortion. Hmm? I wouldn't give you a dime for a person who says that they're a Christian and says, and the churches, are, they're, 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 uh, they're absorbing all these people into their churches, uh, homosexual marriage. We ever do that here? I'm leaving. I know we won't do that here because I know our preacher better than that. Uh, you say, what's wrong? That's against God and this Bible. Hmm? God created Adam and Eve. He made one. See, the thing about this law that I like is I'm not like Solomon. One woman is all I want. Forty-five years in August we'll be together. Forty-five. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. That don't mess up nothing. When you, can you imagine a fellow who's got a thousand women? Brother, that's just messed up. I don't care who you are. You know, that is messed up. I'm trying to tell you, you ought to be stirred up. You know what? There's a lot of people that don't have a Bible and they don't have the right one. Even the Southern Baptists, you know what they're doing? Their Bibles, the backs are, are uh, uh, they're uh, not King James. Hmm? We need to be in this Bible right here. This is a, we ought to be stirred up about it. Right. Amen. Listen at this. Next thing he says in verse number three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. A blessed man is planted in the right place. You know, in the Bible, it's full of pictures and types and all of that. When you see water in the Bible, if water is running, that's a picture of the Holy Ghost. But if water is still, that's a picture of the Word of God. And so in the temple or the tabernacle, they had the brazen laver with water, and it was made of the mirrors, or they call them looking glasses in the Bible. And then priests would come down there, and they, they would see themselves. You know what? You know what this book does? It makes you see you. As long as you see Jesus, you'll always see yourself. Amen. Mm. He's planted there, and you know what happens to a person that's successful, who's blessed? He's planted. His roots run deep into the Christian life. I don't have no desire to be a non-Christian. <laughs> if you could get lost, why would you want to? I mean, just be honest. Why? If you could get lost today again, why would you want to? There's nothing out there that can help you more than in here. There's nobody that can help you more than God can help you. There's nobody that can assist you more than Jesus Christ can. Why would you want to do that if you could do it? He's planted. You know, the Bible says in Mark, it says, but when the sun was up, he's talking about when the sower went out to sow, said the seed, it said it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. You know why you have some people that just come in and leave? 
They have no roots. You know, roots, you know, it's hard to pull up something that's got a deep tap root. It takes a lot. You know what? It takes a lot to discourage a child of God, no matter what problem. We've got people in here that's been through a lot of stuff. And you know why they're still here? Because they're rooted. They're blessed because they're rooted into the Word of God. They're blessed because they're rooted in God's church. They're blessed because they're rooted in God's people. Amen. I'm trying to tell you. Another thing about this, this uh, river, not only is the roots run deep, but that's where they re it receives its nutrition. The Bible talks about this water. It says in Ephesians 5, 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Talking about the church with the washing of the water of the Word. You know what? Every time you get a hold of this book, two things it will do. It will exalt Jesus, and it will cause you to see you. It will cause you to see you. I mean, depends on where you read. Now, you know you can read some of it, and it will get you really excited because you know where you're at, where you're headed. You, you, can't hardly, you can't tell me you can read about going to heaven and that don't excite you, and you're saved. Huh? Streets of gold. Huh? You, that don't excite you. You'd rather be down here in Florence with blacktop in front of your house. Is that where you'd rather be? Living on some gravel road? You can live in heaven. That don't excite you? Huh? Knowing that you're going someplace where you'll never have another problem, you'll never bury another loved one. You know, my wife has had two cousins died in the last week. Two. Two. The second one died last night. We'll never, do you realize in this Bible gives us a promise, Brother Ed, one day we'll sit down by the river of life and we'll never bury another one of our family members. What a wonderful thought to know that we'll never be separated from our friends and our family and our church because of this Bible gives us that hope and promise. We ought to be glad for that. It ought to cause us, this Bible just gives me nourishment to go on. Uh, you can't go through this life without getting beat down. Uh, when you're young, you think you can change the world. You know. And then, then when you get old, you say, man, I hope I can make it out of here. <laughs> you know, that's just, that's just about how it goes, you know. And he, but the Bible gives us uh, nourishment. Now, look at, look at it. It says... In the, that bringeth forth his fruit. You know what this planting does? It reveals the type of tree that you are. I told my granddaughter the other day, I said, you know, you have a testimony. Right? There's nobody in here that don't have a testimony. Right. You don't have to work at it. It is who you are. Amen. Huh? Is that right, Brother Don? Huh? Out of this reveals who you are. Hmm? Yeah. You don't have to wear one of those little rubber bands that says, What would Jesus do? Yeah. Your actions and your reactions reveals that. How you deal with your co workers. Right. Huh? how you deal with your church family. You know, people, you come to church, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, you come to church and people have a bad day, and you say, well, they didn't speak to me, so get over it. If that's the worst thing ever happens to you, you got her made. Huh? There's people who got really big problems. Huh? You know, this, this, this reveals to you who you are. The Bible says in Matthew 7, says even... So every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. You know what? You can't have both fruit. This world's going to see. You know, I would go in places to deliver, and I'd go there every week, and them guys wouldn't cuss around me. I never asked them. They knew something was different. Why? Because I didn't carry on like they did. Hmm? your fruit now the Bible says and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper I thought about that and I thought wow it says whatsoever he doeth 
Now, that don't mean just because you're doing right, you're going to get a, a cloth from Jimmy Swaggart and uh, become a multimillionaire. Probably ain't going to happen. But see, that ain't what we're talking about anyway. See, I've got three examples, and I'm not going to turn there, but you can read them. We, you will know enough about the Bible to know about people who got blessed. And that word uh, prosper, it means to favor or to be successful. There, are, there was a fellow who's probably in the Bible the greatest type of Jesus, and his name was Joseph. He done things that I wouldn't want to be partaker of. He was betrayed by his brother. He was lied on by his uh, owner's wife. He was imprisoned. All of this stuff happened to him. Do you know what? You can prosper even in times of trouble. When things aren't going according to you and your plans, God will make a way for you to be blessed. It's out of your it's how you feel. Right here's a prime example. Brother Donald. I've never shook his hand. I said, How you doing? He said, I'm blessed. Hmm? Man, that encourages me. Because I know what's going on. Huh? Friend, I want to tell you, no matter how dark it gets, I'm telling you, we are one step closer to heaven. If we make it back tonight, we'll be one more step closer to heaven. Why should we hang our head when we think all these troubles? Do you think the world don't have troubles? Huh? You, all you see is the glamour they show on the television. You don't see the behind the, behind the, the stages of all of the, all of the filth and smut and garbage and all of them being sick because they've drunk too much liquor. They don't show you that. They just show you all the pretty faces. They don't show you all, all the horrible things that goes on. Mm. I heard one preacher say they don't show them throwing up Saturday morning from all night Saturday, Sunday, Friday night. Uh, you drive down the interstate and it has a picture of Budweiser and, and uh, water's bubbled up on it and it looks so inviting. But it don't show that guy who just run over a wife and her two kids. Uh, I want to tell you something. You might have it bad, but I want to tell you something. By the Word of God, they got it worse than we got it. Because you don't know what today holds. Do you know what? We might come back tonight, and one of us might not make it back here. God might be saying, this is the night that so-and-so goes home to be with God. How much better would it be to know God than to be a billionaire then? We're encouraged by the, that fact. Ruth chapter 2 talks about Ruth, you know, coming and she's out there gleaning in the field. She found favor in the times of famine. Uh, you ever come to church? You ever read your Bible and you say, Brother Josh, you ever read your Bible and you're like, man, I just ain't get nothing. I just, I, I am just trying and I can't get nothing. You know what you do? You just keep digging. You never get water in a well until you get to where the water is. You have to keep digging. And you know what Ruth did? She got up and she went out to the field. She just she was blessed. Why? Because she went out to the field. She got she took little home at the first. But did you read the last part? When she went in there into the in the we would call it down home a corn crib. And she laid down next to Boaz. And when she left, she had that veil full. You know what? God blessed her when there was times of famine, when there's trouble, when it seems like God ain't nowhere around. If you just keep being faithful, just keep being blessed, you know what God will do? He'll show up and do something big for you. Look, Esther, she found time in her tribulation. She found a favor. Here she was, a Jew. And the, the news went out that they were going to kill all the Jews. And her uncle Mordecai said, you know what? She said, I'm not saying much, you know. I mean, if I was living in the palace, I probably wouldn't want to say much either. But he said to her, you know, maybe, maybe God has put you here for such a time as this. 
and she called have a meeting you know what God did he blessed she, he blessed her because she stood in front of the king when she told her she told her uncle she said you know what you all fast and pray and I'll fast and pray and, and uh, because you couldn't go in to see the king whenever you wanted to he said I'll go in and if I die I die you know what happened they had the right to defend themselves and the Jews they Jews come out on top you know and they're going to come out on top and it's all said and done anyway right, right. amen they're going to come out on top you know what I'm trying to tell you you can prosper when you're going through tribulations when there just seems like no, no way when people are just uh, on you on every side if you ever read the Psalms through and it seems like David uh, David's kind of got a weird point of view about things he's, he's talking about those that set snares for him he said God kill them <laughs> he said bless me Lord <laughs> I mean do you get that theory if you read it you'll find that out if you keep reading through his life he, he'll say you know Lord they're, they're, they're trying to ensnare me Lord he said I want you killed ain't that like, ain't that like us kill them and bless me uh, I used to work with a guy and this was his favorite saying and it's a true statement we'd be, he'd be driving and we'd be talking and he said oh there's a wreck he said I'm glad that ain't me <laughs> and, and you know I started laughing because but you know what that's really how we feel I'm glad it ain't me listen here last of all it says for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Do you know what God knows? He knows your path. The blessed man's path is revealed to God. God knows you. He's watching over you. You're not out here floundering around like some catfish dying on the bank. God is watching over you. Every, to, every, every motive, every move, God, it, it's not checkers with God, it's chess. God's making every move for you. Uh Here's what he, 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 here's his path. He says in Psalms uh, 18, he says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Seems like God's just got every place you could go to. Huh? Do you know what God knows your path of faith? Do you know what God knows where you're at in your life as a Christian? A person that gets saved today, God ain't going to, he ain't going to require them to know the Bible like he knows, wants you to know it. If you've been saved for 20 years, if you don't know more than a guy that just gets saved today, something's wrong. Right. How much faith do you have? When troubles come, do you just buckle? Uh, the Bible, one of the greatest questions asked in the Bible was Jesus asked this question. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? That's the greatest question that's ever been asked. Right. Uh, when he comes, will he find you being faithful? Will he find you trusting in the word of God? Or will you have given yourself over to believe uh, people like Joe Biden who don't know what they had for breakfast this morning? Uh, you're going to trust in a po political system? Even in the best, even in the best of days when people were honest, you can't trust man. They're not trustworthy. Mm. You got your faith. Because the Bible says they're just to live by faith. Do you know what God knows about you and your path? That you have a future. Do you know you're the only people, saved people are, that has a bright future? You say, well, it don't look too bright right now. It ain't over yet. We ain't even close to being over. Hmm. Do you know what? The only people that's got a reason to smile today is those that's been born again. Sure. Because all this other stuff is just a facade. It ain't real. Right. It's going to fold up. Do you know, I think we're on the brink of financial failure in America. You say, why? Because we have kicked God out of every aspect of our life. We've kicked him out of the school system. We've kicked him out of our homes. And we've kicked him out of our churches. And we've kicked him out, out of uh, every, the government. I mean, you, whatever you want to name, they've got, you know, some kind of... You know we've got more people suffering with mental health issues? My dad had a cure for mental health. 
Yeah. He, he had one. It was called B-E-L-T. That cured my mental health real quick. <laughs> when he got off the back of that, when he went down off the bed and pulled that leather strap off, I said, yes, sir, I get the point. Uh, no more arguing out of me. And that's where we're at today. We've kicked God out and the devil's taken over. And you expect, these people are blind to what's coming. But we are not. Why? Because God knows our path. Do you know something else that God knows about your? Is your foundation. If you're saved, He knows who you're standing on. I'm telling you, I cannot fail. I cannot fall because of who I believed in. Not because of me. I'm weak and frail. I, I cannot trust myself. Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who, who shall deliver me? A great man like Paul who says, This flesh don't dwell nothing good in it. You can't trust this flesh. But I want to say this. I can trust the foundation. If your foundation ain't good, the rest of it's no good. Years ago, and I'm closing right here, <clears throat> we was at a family reunion for my wife. And they were talking about this church. I don't even remember what it was. And before they came and opened the church doors, this is what they said. We went out into the public and we took a list of everything that everybody wanted and that's how we'll operate our church. And here's some of the list. Some people wanted to just wear casual clothes. You know, shorts and Bermuda, Bermuda shorts and a tank top. Some wanted coffee and donuts. Some wanted Coke. That's how they function. I don't see that in the Bible. The Bible ain't got a thing in the world to do with that. If you want a donut, stop and get you one. Help yourself. I ain't buying it for you. If you go home with me, I'll stop and get you one. But I'm trying to tell you, this building here ain't nothing about food and fun. It's about the facts of this Bible. And I want to tell you, are you blessed today? Do you really realize how blessed you really are? You say, but I'm going through this. So is everybody else. So is everybody else. There's nobody. Now, a lot of these young folks, you're getting started, you know. Say, if you're getting started, you know, and praise God. Hallelujah. But there's going to be some troubles along the way. I'm just going to tell you. You're getting married. As Ray said, don't do it. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm going to give you some advice right from the pulpit. You're going to have problems because all of us do. That's just part of being human. Folks, I want to tell you, I'm blessed today. Not because I'm who I am, but because who I am in. And his name is Jesus. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.